Well, that's not the way to start off a stream. So, yeah, there's a storm rolling in. Power flickered for a moment, and it was just enough to take it. wasn't enough to shut down the computer, but it was enough to take out my internet. So, good times. So I get asked quite often, everything around here, uh, about settings in X-Plane and, you know, and, and getting 17 frames a second and, and blah, 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 blah. You know, so I wanted to kind of go over, make a brief uh, little intro, I guess, to uh, what I do to look at my settings and what I do to improve my frames per second. So there's a, there's a couple different things. Before we even get into X-Plane here, go ahead and just pause X-Plane. Um, in fact, let's just go ahead and... Uh, Pull up the desktop. Okay, so if you've got an NVIDIA card, the first thing you want to look at, if you, if you, if you have an NVIDIA video card, you want to go to your NVIDIA control panel. And for it, it, you know, it, it could be it's over here, but uh, quite honestly, it's down your bottom right shortcut. Um, click on the NVIDIA called NVIDIA setting. Click on that. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring up a window. Which I've got on this other monitor here. It's going to look like this. Now. From the factory, everything is set for optimal power. So you want to scroll down, and what you're going to look for first is preferred refresh rate. Uh, you want the highest available. And then texture, texture filtering quality, this is going to be set at quality. You want to set this at the high performance. And then there is one other. Those two. Here, the power management mode. That's power management mode. Prefer maximum performance. This will be set at optimal power. It'll be set right here by default. You want to prefer maximum performance. So maximum performance here, the refresh rate highest available, and your texture filtering quality at high performance. And then you'll scroll down and you'll hit apply. There'll be apply button. I didn't make any changes, so mine's not going to have that. So make sure that that's done. Now, what that does is your graphics card from NVIDIA is overclocked at the factory. If you don't turn those two on, you will you're you're leaving clock speed on the table. So it doesn't affect your VRAM or anything like that. It's just going to affect your actual clock speed of your GPU. So you want to make sure that that is, like I said, set to high performance. All right, now the next, the next uh, thing you want to look at is making sure that you run X-Plane in administrator mode. A lot of guys don't do that, and it causes them problems. Let's see if we can minimize this here. Go window simulator. Go over here in your icons. If you right click your X plane icon, desktop icon, and go to properties, you can go to compatibility. And then down here, there'll be a box that says run the program as an administrator. Tick that box. Hit apply and OK. Now, you're asking, well, why would I want to do that? Uh, that one will it could affect your frame rate because it, it adjusts the priority on which it looks your system looks at X plane. If you're running it as administrator, it's automatically going to get prioritized a little bit higher than a normal program would. 
So if your computer all of a sudden decides that, hey, I'm going to defragment your hard drive or SSDs in the middle of a flight, it's going to help you if that were to happen. So another thing you want to do is if you run Active Sky, you want to do the same thing to Active Sky. You want to run it as administrator. That's not going to necessarily help your frame rate. But what that's going to do is that's going to help you keep your weather up to date. It's not going to reload, reload, reload a couple bunch of different times. It's going to kind of cut out that that whole middleman thing that it does, and it'll uh, it'll make your it'll make your weather load a little bit quicker and a little bit it'll be more accurate because it's not going to have to continuously reload. <clears throat> so there's there's that. So those two things right off the bat, you want to make sure that you do before you even get into the simulator and we mess around with settings and all that jazz. You want to make sure, run the program as administrator, go into your control panel, turn it up to performance, and that way you're starting off on the right foot when you go into your simulator. So let's pull our simulator up now. And here we are. Now I chose LaGuardia. Uh, a couple different airports. The reason why I chose it because it's a payware airport for me. It's raining currently. It has New York in the background. Um, so, and I chose the Zebo because that's a common plane that every, it's freeware, so everybody could have that plane. Um, but you want to choose a plane that's going to be frame rate heavy. Um, the Zebo is okay with frame rates. It's it's not extremely heavy, but you know, if you guys want me to try other aircraft, you can pop in a chat and say, hey, try this one, try this one, and I, and I will. And most likely, if we do, we do a bunch of changes in the simulator, the x plane will probably crash. We'll have to reload it. I mean, it's just the way it is. But, so I try to choose a frame-heavy airport like Chicago, KORD, that's another one. Um, LA is another one. So choose a graphics-heavy airport, maybe one with traffic. Um, if you have VAT sim, maybe fire that up. Just get some get some plane movement. I have Traffic Global running on here as well, so I've got traffic continuously moving. I just you want to try to load your you load your simulator down to make it worst case scenario. Now, there's some guys, there's some pilots that they choose to go use X Organizer, which is a great program by the way. If you don't have that, I highly suggest it. And they will go in and turn things off that they're not going to be flying near. They'll turn ortho off in certain areas. They'll and, they'll, and they do that because your your scenery INI file loads all that in your system. Now, it, it, it's sitting out there. It's not accessing it, but it'll it'll load into your, into your system uh, memory. I don't like doing that. I don't go in and turn a bunch of stuff off. I want to double click on my icon, fly the simulator, and be done with it. I don't, I don't want to have to think about where I'm going to fly. I'm going to turn this off, that off. Because inevitably, I'll forget to turn something back on. <laughs> I'll get on one of my streams. And next thing you know, I'm flying a naked plane into, a, into dirt. Because there's no airport. You know, because that's the way I roll. So I just leave all that stuff on, man. I, I, don't, I don't worry about turning things on, off. Um, you can if you like. It's, it's a personal preference. Um, it will help. It will help your frame rates a little bit if you do that, but I don't see a necessity in it. I've never done it. So there's that. Okay, so you're in your simulator, and you've got a bunch of these sliders. Now, I understand this has changed from X-Plane uh, 10, which I didn't actually, I didn't actually fly. I, I started with X-Plane 11. Um, but... I understand that this is a departure from where it was. So let's take a let's take a look. If you were to go in here to data output and this frame rate box, tick that box. I've already done it. And it puts this little info center up here in your top left. So you want to go ahead and do that. That way it gives you an idea, it gives you some information about what's going on and what you're doing. And let's take a look at that real quick. So you got frame rate actual. This is your actual frame rate that you're producing. So right now I'm sitting at about 37, 38 frames per second in LaGuardia. And that's going to change depending on what view you look at. See, we're up to, what is that, 43. 
you know, if we get all of a sudden New York in the background, it could dip down. We're up 52. We go to the terminal, and it seems to be, you know, some uh, airports are not optimized, and you'll you'll be you'll scan, you'll rotate your camera. All of a sudden, your frame rate will dip down to like 20. That's happened before. Uh, that's just an optimization problem with that particular airport. They've got something that's resource hungry. It could be just a a simple window in the in the terminal that isn't coded right. That's not something you can really you really want to worry about. So then you've got F Sim. This is what the simulator is requesting to keep your simulator stable. You don't want the either of these to drop below 19. Anything below 19 is considered unstable, and you're going to get frame rate drops. You're going to get it. Just it makes the simulator completely unflyable. So I had some guys coming in saying, hey, I got 17 frames a second. How do I fix it? Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. So if you're 19 is is the no-go zone. That's that's a no-no place. Don't, don't go there. So then you've got your CPU. you got frame here. This is the, the frame is the required uh, time to render one frame. So right now we're at point zero zero two three. Hell, I got this thing so small, I can't even see if I hold on. It's uh, so it, to f to render one frame, it's zero point zero two. It's the change second. So then you skip over to the G the CPU, and that tells you how long my CPU's take to render a frame, and so on and so over to the GPU. Now these last two. Laminar has yet to say really what these do. So I'm not even going to talk about those because what we really need is in these first. It's really in the GPU, CPU, and this one over here. Your actual. So you got really three that you want to focus on. So well, you, you ask, well, what, what goes into what category? What's GPU? What's CPU? And how do I, how do I know? So what I would suggest is that you, you've picked an airport that's heavy traffic, probably the worst weather you can get, an aircraft that's, that you know is, is heavy on frames, get all that loaded in. Get all that loaded in. Then you want to start with one slider at a time. I would, I, you know, a lot of guys start with everything all the way down to zero. Um... I like to start with everything all the way turned up, um, and I, I pick one. I pick like the, if I'm gonna start with the CPU, I pick that. Then I go to the GPU and I start working on that. So, so what what applies to what? So let's take a look. Uh, CPU. So this number of world objects right here. This is directly CPU, your processor, related. There's nothing to do with your graphics card at all. So this is going to affect your draw, your, dis your draw distance, and the amount of world objects that your simulator is going to render. So if you if you notice up here that your CPU now you want this to stay around point zero point two zero point zero two rather. If this is up zero point zero four or three and a half and four, you're getting pretty high and you're going to notice that your frame rates are going to drop. Your, your simulator your simulator and your actual are going to be really, really low. In fact, you may get a warning that says um, that your frame rates are, are too low and you need to adjust your setting. So I don't know if my, I don't know if my chat's refreshing the power outage. I hope it is. Pull up another chat window just in case. All right, guys, we had a power outage right as we started. Somebody's in there. Okay, no. All right, I ain't got anything. Good. Okay. So, what else applies uh, to the CPU? Well, uh, field of view. Some guys don't even look at that. So, if you scroll over to the right. the lateral field of view. So I'm at about 78 degrees. Now, why does that affect your frame rate? 
why does it affect your CPU and your frame rate? Well, if you think about it, if you're standing up close to something, you're focusing on maybe a portion this big. You're asking your computer to render something that's within this little space. If you open up your field of view, now you're asking your computer to render what's in this space. So it, causes, it takes more computing power to do that. Therefore, it'll affect your frame rate. So I'm right at about 78 degrees. I found that sitting in the cockpit, I can, uh, it, it, it looks relatively uh, realistic. Um, I think the simulator comes preloaded at 60. Um, that's, that's, that's too close for me. If I feel like I'm eating, you know, I'm eating the dashboard. So let's not do that. Okay, so those two things are going to affect your CPU, or three things right off the bat. The third, I'm sorry, the third thing is your plugins. So all those plugins um, mostly affect your CPU. Um, some of them will affect your GPU adversely. But when you're loading in all that software into your simulator, that is, you're, you're asking your processor to process all of those, those mathematical equations and insert those into your simulator. So it hasn't even reached your graphics card yet. It's, it's focused on doing all those tasks you've asked it to do. And I am 100% guilty with that. I have so many plugins in my system that it is just dumb at this point. Um, and it's, you know, and that's right now I would say my cap is, is probably my, my CPU, even though it's an i9. It, it's, I've got so much loaded that I'm, that's what I'm, I'm asking my system to handle all those equations and run the software to fly the plane. So those three things are, are all going to be CPU related. So GPU. GPU is going to be all right in here. This is where you live. This is all GPU right here. Visual effects, your texture quality, your anti-aliasing, and your anisotropic filtering. Those things are going to, uh, and the reflection detail. A lot of guys group this in with the CPU. This is not CPU. This is graphics. So you've got, right away, you've got five things on these sliders that are graphics related. So again, you want, I start off with everything max all the way cranked up. Turned up for what, right? So if we turn this up, that up, turn anti-aliasing up, and it's a tropic filtering up. Let's just crank it. And let's hit, uh, let's hit done. Let's think about what it's done here for just a second. Oh, I'll explain. It's probably going to take a dump on me. Jeopardy. So it's basically right now it's it's reloading, re-rendering all of those uh, objects and everything else that I've asked it to do. So it could take a second. And I'm even on, I'm on SSD drives. So I mean it could take a bit a hot minute. You know, you're asking it to basically rewrite the entire uh, world that it had in its memory. Just clear the first time out. All right, here we go. So we'll let this let the simulator settle down here just a second. All right, look at my frame rate in the top left. Eight frames a second. Between seven and eight. Now, if you look. My GPU is at 0.12, and my CPU is at 0 0.3, or, yeah, 0 0.03. So right now, because I turned all those sliders up, my graphics card is freaking out. So let's go over to, um, get one, pull up, one, do it, there you go. 
All right, so we've got everything cranked. So now you want to start with, uh, I would start with reflection detail. I'd kind of start, start at the bottom and work your way back around. So reflection detail, uh, it, 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 it looks okay, but to be honest with you, if you look at the differences in the sunlight between maximum, high, and medium, there's very little difference. So we're at eight frames a second right now. So let's take just, we'll just take reflection detail, not touch anything else. We'll take that down. So there's very high, high. We'll skip very high. We'll just leave it on high. Let's see what that does. Didn't change our frame rate a whole lot. So between eight and nine now. GPU still processes are still high. So I would suggest taking this to at least medium. I think that's where the things start happening. We're down to 12, point one two. Take this down to low. Okay, if you notice, that's not changing the frame rates a whole lot. So let's go back. So now that we have that understanding, we can almost, let's just go up here to high. Or to medium. Oh, yeah, okay, high. There we go. Okay, so some of these you're going to have to restart explain to uh, make changes. There's a little, little uh, message down here. So to adjust your anisotropic filtering, you will have to restart explain. So let's see, we're at eight frames a second. So anti-aliasing, if you're on a 4K monitor, you don't need to have your anti-aliasing ring. Your monitor is going to handle it. Um, I am on a 2K monitor. Uh, so there's no reason for me to be up in, you know, eight times, four times. Uh, but let's just see what it does. So we're at eight frames. We went from eight times down to four. Uh, this really didn't matter because we didn't restart explain yet. And let's it done. All right, so now we're up to, is that about 10, 11, 12? Yeah, and then now explain's gonna start freaking out. Doesn't like to mess with anti-aliasing. Let's go to four times SSA. That's wonderful. That's explained for you. All right, let's go ahead and quit that. No sense nobody having a damn seizure over explained crashing. That's one bad thing about explained is, is if you're doing all these changes, it will crash. Just like that. That's why I preface this whole video with the fact that it, it's probably going to crash once or twice. But, you know, it, this is one of, the, one of those things where you get it done, you get it out of the way, and you've got your settings locked in. You don't have to worry about it. Let's last Hopefully the shaders and everything are already pre-built. It doesn't take that long to reload. Now with 11.5 as well, you've got Vulkan and OpenGL. You've got two options. If your simulator crashes and you get booted out, kind of like we just did, um, I should have actually checked. A lot of times it will reload, but it'll give you a warning. It'll say uh, unable. You know, simulator has uh, was on became unstable with Vulkan drivers rebooting in OpenGL. So. It didn't give us that warning, so we should still be in Vulcan. Uh, with the Vulcan engine, um, it does take more of your more use of your 
system processing power versus OpenGL. OpenGL was kind of like a one-way street, you know, with the uh, the way it, it handled information. It came in one way, it handled it, and it sent it out. When Vulcan is like a multi-lane highway, it's able to bring more information in and send more information out a lot more efficiently. So if you have to run an OpenGL, you can. Uh, it just will not be the level of performance that you can get with Vulcan. Especially the guys with the ATI graphics cards, they they stood to gain out of switching over to Vulcan. Okay, here we are. We're back in the simulator. It's raining. We're at about 17 to 20 frames a second, depending on where we're looking. You know, in the cockpit here. As you can see, the simulator is very slow to react. I'm moving my mouse left and right, and it's just jittery. And we bounce around 14, 15 frames a second. Now, when you're trying to land, this happened to me the other day. I was flying into L.A. on runway 7 right, and I had a bunch of things running, and when I came in... Um, I think X-Pilot or something, you know, I don't know whether it was X-Pilot or my Orbex HD or something, my frame rates dropped and to the point where I got kicked off of VATSIM because of my frame rates. And then when all of a sudden when they restored, my plane dropped like a rock. This fell out of the sky. So you want to make sure that your frame rates can sustain your flight. It, it, it happened to me. I was, you know, everybody wants to be greedy and get the best, the best looking simulator. And I thought, you know what, I'm going inst to, I installed Orbix HD California. Normally I had run Orbix standard def because when you're above 5,000 feet, it all looks the same anyway. But I, I tried it and it bit me. It bit me right in the rear end because it was just with the traffic that was in LA and the weather, you know, the weather was actually nice. But everything combined, it just, it made me, it made my sim almost crash. Kicked off of that sim and then plummeted to the ground. Right on short final. So here we are. We're at 18, 17 frames a second, so still no bueno. We're still below that 19, 19 frames a second. So now we're at 4x SSA. So I'm on a 2K monitor. I can still stand to bring this down. I'll bring this down to two. Two times. And we are using the Vulcan engine. It is checked. Let's go ahead and hit done again. All right. So now we're up to 25, 26 frames a second. So now, technically, the simulator is flyable. And if you turn left and right, look how much quicker the plane reacts, the camera reacts. It's still not as fast as I'd like. So up here in your CPU and GPU... You know, look to see what's what's hammering us. The GPU is actually freed up a little bit, but the CPU is still at 3.91. So 26 frames a second, yes, it's pliable, but I want to give myself a little bit of a cushion because things happen. You get traffic, you're on Batsim, you 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 know you you got really bad weather. It's you go at night, at night rendering with all the accent lighting and stuff that plays havoc on your scene. So if you go back in over here, number of world objects max. So my CPU, I would say, is what my cap is. And world object is my cap. So let me take that down to high, from maximum to high, and let's hit done. Now this, again, is going to take a second. It has to re-render everything that it's uh, we're being displayed. Hassan, welcome, buddy. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about settings tonight. I could do a flight, uh, but I wanted to uh, address some uh, settings. I, I, we can ask a, a lot of questions um, on the channel as far as X-Plane settings and the SATEC panels. In fact, my number one video on my channel is about the SATEC. What do we got there? Let's switch the screen. Got it. 
Dio Martins, welcome for the thank you. Welcome to the sub. Uh, welcome to the stream, buddy. Thank you for the sub, man. I had my monitor changed differently because I noticed that my chat is not refreshing because of the power outage that we had when we first started. One minute, to, one minute before the stream starts, I lose my internet connection. Okay, so now take a look up here. We're at about 32, 30 frames a second. Now let's see how the camera moves here. Look how quick it reacts. So up at the top, our CPU, we're at 0 0.03. The GPU is at 0 0.02. The simulator is asking about 32 frames, and we're delivering about the same that it's asking. So our frame actual, and to render each frame is taking 0 0.04 seconds. So that's still, that's still kind of high. Still kind of high. So what can we do to change that? So this reflection detail, I think it's my C, I, I want to focus on my CPU, which again is this reflection detail like we talked about. So let me take that down to medium. The differences between high and medium is next to null. You're not going to notice it. So let's go ahead and hit done there. This should be a quick read, and it is. Okay, so now look at our frame rate. It's 0 0.027 seconds for each frame. And we're almost sitting at 38, 39 frames. 36. So now let's take a look. It's instantaneous. I'm moving the mouse left, right, left, right. Look at that. It, it's instantaneous. And here we are in LaGuardia. It's raining. Let's go outside the plane for a second. Forty two, forty three. And we're less than point zero two frames. Point zero two and some change seconds to render one frame. So this is where you want to live. You want to live right here. This gives you some room in case you choose to go uh, in bad weather, go on bat sim, do whatever you need to do. So I've pretty much found my settings right here. That's why I said start with everything maxed because now your visual effects, your texture quality, this is what's going to give you the best look of your simulator. You know, I've got 8,474 8, megabits loaded into VRAM. So I've got 11 on my card. So I'm still okay. My, I'm running a 2K monitor, so I don't need anti-aliasing pulled up all the way cranked. Anisotropic filtering, I'm okay with 4X. But I get the visual and the texture qualities are at max. Look at that. And I can't even use this HDR. I can't even use high dynamic range because my monitor is in 4K. So technically, I could pull that down. You know, to even high HDR. I can't use that. I'm not going to notice that on my monitor. But I don't want to drop anything below that because if you drop the low visual effects, if you drop a little high, you lose your nighttime lighting. You lose a, you lose a lot of uh, special effects that are in the simulator. So if I if I were to take my visual effects down, let's say uh, from maximum down to high, let's just take a see what that does. And look, it it didn't do hardly anything because my graphics card is not my cap. I can turn that back up. Yeah. We're sitting at the same frames. So the things you want to focus on are your visual effects, your texture quality. This is what's going to give you the best look. You've seen. Your anti-aliasing is going to take away some of those jitters, some of those fine edges um, that seem to be flickering. It's going to take those out. If you're on a 2K monitor, really you don't have to go anything above 2X SSA FXAA. Um, it's you're, you're just you're spending frames that you don't need to spend. It's like having a having a you know a checkbook with a battle with a certain limit on it. You want to spend that money wisely in, in as many categories as you can and get your most bang for the buck. And to alias it is is you're okay if a 2K monitor you're okay at two times. Uh, if you got a 4K monitor, you're okay at two times. Now, if you're running just a standard like 1080p, you might want to bump that up to 4x, you know, to 
to get away with some of those jitters. But when you're up to 2K and 4K monitors, monitors will handle that for you. Neo from Brazil. Welcome, sir. Welcome. That's awesome. Yeah, Hassan. Yeah, see how it, it's, it, it does. It, it gets smoother. So we've talked about field of view. We've talked about reflection detail, world objects, reflection detail, visual effects, texture quality, anti-aliasing, and anisotropic filtering are all GPU bound. Your world objects, your field of view, and your plugins are going to be CPU bound. So with that said, uh, we've got some other things going on here. We've got draw parked aircraft, shadows on scenery. Huh. Vein of my existence here, these two buttons. Now, uh, let's if we check draw shadows on scenery, um, I don't know that it's going to do a whole lot in an overcast setting. So let's, let's see what it does here. Now, what this essentially is going to do is take every object that could possibly have a shadow cast is going to be drawn a shadow on the ground um, that is going to take up some processing power uh, typically I leave that off I mean, if you can turn it on that's great if you got a 3000 series graphics card they, they may unlock that feature for us but for me a sh my plane always cast a shadow my plane does but if the terminal doesn't cast a shadow or the plane sitting next to me or the car that's driving down the street doesn't cast a shadow or the leaves on the tree that's down the runway, if that doesn't cast a shadow, then I really don't care. You know, so it, it's going to, this is going to uh, eat up some frames, I guarantee you. We'll get back in here and explain as soon as it's done loading and we'll take a look at it. All right, so we're sitting at 21, 25. So we're bouncing around a little bit. But as you can see, every, look at the shadow. Shadow, 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 shadow. Go up a little bit. Uh, let's release that. Let's go here, here, and up. See the building right here, cast a shadow. Right there. So if you look at the CPU, it's it's costing me that cost me about point zero one a little over point zero one a second for each frame that I'm processing. The CPU is at 0 0.029 and the GPU is at 0 0.021. So let's turn. Let's just turn that off while we're staring at the same spot. So let's look at the shadows here, shadows everywhere else. Turn it off. Won't move the camera. My chat over here would work. All right, so we turned reflection or turned shadows off, and we should be back to high 30s, 40 frames. And then you can. There's the, the last checkbox is parked aircraft. Um, we'll tick that box just to see what it does. Uh, I don't know that it's going to do a whole lot. Uh, I'm running traffic global, so I've already pretty much got traffic everywhere regardless. So as you can see, those shadows that were here are now gone. None of the aircraft is ca are catching shadows. None of the terminals. None of the nothing's casting a shadow. But if you turn back to my plane, it has the shadow. Your plane always will. 
But all the other ones are gone, and my frame rate, my cost to process each frame is point zero one and some change. So in fact, it almost doubled just with reflection, with the not reflection, but the shadows, uh, cast shadows turned on. So the last tick, last box we're going to talk about here is draw parked aircraft. Let's see what that does. This should be a very long, I don't think. I'm sure the simulator is super pissed right now that I'm, <laughs> I've been in and out, in and out, changing the menus, minimizing, maximizing. We had simulator crash once. I I mad, I thought it was going to crash a lot more than that so far, but it hasn't. I don't know that I would trust it to do a flight at the moment. I'd probably restart later to do the flight, have a fresh, fresh simulator to do anything, but... This is going to get my point across and everything. Now, another thing that's, you know, we talked about plugins. Plugins is going to affect your CPU because you're asking them to, uh, you're asking your CPU to process all those demands, all that software, all that math, all those mathematical equations you're asking it to do. Uh, your scenery, custom scenery file, uh, those for the most part are going to affect your GPU because you're changing your scenery. All right, so here we are. We draw parked aircraft. We're at 0 0.02, and that is, yeah, it looks like it's affecting our CPU. So now everything, everything around here, every spot should be pretty much full. We've got parked aircraft all over the place. Yep, look at all that. Now, I don't know about you, but I could care less about that. <laughs> I'm already running Traffic Global, so I, I don't care about parked aircraft. So, take that away. And wait for the simulator again. Wish I could snap my fingers and uh, make it to where it isn't dead time to load, but... all those points. Give me my frame rate back. Yeah, those parked aircraft, not important at all. I mean, look at this. Uh, look, it, Traffic Global's already handling all that for me. But I just, I picked up all those. I picked up that those frame rate, my frame rate back. So my rendering per frame is back down to 0 0.021. It's dipping in and out. So yeah, not, not that's not important at all. I, I didn't think so either, Hassan. All right. Okay, so I think we've pretty much covered everything. Um, if I've forgotten something, I mean, I, I, there's only a few of us here in chat. Um, throw it in there if you want me to discuss it. But I think we've pretty much handled business here as far as the settings. So pay attention to what's GPU and what's CPU bound. We went over that in the, in the video so far. And start with your sliders maxed and work your way down. Work your way kind of back. And you know, if you can end up with end up with something like this, I think you'll have a really nice, you know, a really pleasurable uh, scenery and, and a simulator you enjoy to fly.
Oh, there's V-Sync down here too. Um, I turn that off. V-Sync will limit your frame rates. Um, I let the NVIDIA control panel handle all that. That way I don't have my simulator handle. It's just one less thing I need it to be worrying about. And here we are back in the cockpit. So yeah, we're just, it's smooth as glass. Again, I don't know necessarily if I would trust to put this up in the air at the moment. <laughs> but we've restarted the simulator so many times and we've made so many changes. I would, uh, I'd restart the simulator before we took flight. But let's do, uh, let's do one other thing. Let's try. Go here. Go time of day. All right, so now if you notice, I'm down to 33 frames a second. The nighttime, the rendering of the night lighting, the HDR lighting is going to take a toll. So that's why you wanted to give yourself a little bit of breathing room. So here we are outside the plane. I'm sitting at 3940. I was at about 33 inside the plane. But you want to give yourself enough headroom to be able to handle all the all this lighting in case you want to fly at night. Oh, there we are. And with this with with the procedure that we've gone over in the video today, it, it, it you kind of work your way backwards, um, focus on one thing at a time, CPU or GPU, do one slider at a time, and your end result is you want to have your frame rate per per frame, uh, your time around 0.02. If it's around there, that means your frame rates are automatically going to be better. Over to the far left, your actual and your what your simulator needs to be stable. Those two are going to be fine. You're not going to worry about them. If you're below 19 and you, you're, you've got a, things in your plug-in folder longer than Santa Claus Christmas list, then you're going to have to take things out because you're, you're just over overburdening your simulator. So there it is. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask. If not, um, that's really all I had. That's what I wanted to explain in tonight's, tonight's video is how to get your setting and explain and not be at 17, 17 frames a second. Like like the last, the last stream we had, a guy popped in and wanted to know what he needed to do to get his frame rates back. Well, this is what you do. You know, it takes some time. You'll be sitting at this, you know, for probably a, an hour. Well, how long have we been here? Been here a little less than an hour. But I already had a pretty good idea where my simulator needed to be. So if you have no clue, or you've got a new computer, or you put a new graphics card in, or something like that, then you're going to be doing this. Now, say that you did. Say that you did um, change. You had a driver update. Um, you put in a new graphics card. You did something along those lines. Make sure that you go into your X-Plane directory and delete the items that are in your preferences folder. So the next time you load the simulator, it's going to take you to the, an intro, the intro again with the Cessna. And you can have to skip all that. You have to change some of your settings back to the way they were. But that re-initializes the simulator. Because a lot of times what will happen is those files will get corrupt, especially if you've changed graphics cards from one to another. It was used to performing here, and you're now being able to perform here. It doesn't understand that it needs to recalculate. It's going to try to continue to use those other those other calculations. So if you delete out of the preferences folder and the scripts folder, start over from scratch as far as that goes. Maybe take a picture of your settings with your cell phone. That way you know where to put them back when you come back in. It's going to let your let your system rebuild everything based on your new configuration of your hardware. All right. Oh, I had peeps. Whoops. Go 
ahead over here and we change this back to uh, five. Oh, it's actually that time. Got out there. The Delta taxing. The CRJ 200. Nighttime takes more FPS because you're having to render all the HDR lighting. So right now, it, it there's no there's no lighting happening. The lighting is going to. Um, make a huge impact on your system so like right now back to night lighting so we're at where are we at here? with it paused we're at about 40 frames a second why change still paused we're at 32 frames so that cost us seven frames just in this one scene right here i didn't move the move the mouse at all we lost seven frames just going with lighting because all these terminals Right over here, that's all HDR lighting. All of this. And it's got to render every little little dot of light out as far as you know, I can see here. But if you notice, if you're out here, and you're looking, we're at about 45 frames a second, turn towards the terminal with the, with the HDR lighting, all of a sudden, we're at 35, 34. So this takes more processing power to, to uh, more calculations to the way the light casts onto the ground, the way the reflections off the walls, off of each individual object. So that that's why it, it's there's a lot more calculations having to have, be had when the uh, at night with all the lighting. In fact, right now at that we were sitting right right at the very second we're at 26 frames, 25 frames a second. So that's how much it's impact. But you move the camera just a little bit, and that changes. Now all of a sudden we're up to 33. That's why it's important to give yourself a little bit of leg room. Very out. Out. And if you zoom in, lift your frame. One, two. You can bounce to the 20s a little bit. Yeah, nighttime just wreaks havoc on your process. Because of all the calculations required to handle refractive light and stuff like that. And we're back up. We're back. Bye. So, what do you think, Hassan? Answer some questions that you had. Everybody, good. Wanted to make this video just because I've been asked on my channel a couple different times as far as frame rate and how to make how to improve things. I think that this would help a few people. Hopefully, it's, you know the explanations in this video are more uh, concise, easy to understand. Tune in your simulator, probably going to take you close to half an hour to an hour. Just because of all the rebooting and the loading and the testing and all that jazz. Uh, 
All right, guys. Well, I am not going to do a flight tonight. I just wanted to do this video. I put that. Well. All right, y'all. Yeah, not a problem, son. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. All right, guys. Uh, with that said, I am going to uh, sign off here. I had I could do a flight, but I really uh, really wanted to do this video so that way we can we can help some people out. But uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully it helps you a little bit. Whoever's watching this video uh, post live, uh, give it a like and a subscribe. Uh, help help me out, help the channel out, because I'm a new streamer. So uh, I hope this uh, reaches everybody and it, it helps, you, uh, helps you out in your simulator. Take care, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other, and have a great night.